Welcome to Lessons for Living. My name is Bill Santos. Thank you so much for watching. Well, he's back. We told you he'd be back, and he is. Dr. Sloan, welcome back. Thanks, Bill. Good to it's be good here. Good to have you here. Now, uh, there may be some folks joining us for the very first time and are not sure why I'm so excited about Dr. Sloan being back. Who is this Dr. Sloan? So maybe we can ask you just to introduce yourself for the benefit of those that, that, that don't know you. Sure. Um, I'm a doctor of natural medicine and have been in practice for 36 years now, hard to believe. Um, I operate two clinics, one in uh, Whitby and the other one in Simcoe, which is a, a town south of Brantford in the Hamilton Brantford area. So I've been busy with that for, uh, as I say, 36 years and excited to be here today to share some of the things I've I've picked up over the years in practice. Well, thank you. Um, for those of you that didn't get a chance to see the first time Dr. Sloan was on, uh, visit our website, l4ltv.com. You can see that program where he shares with us the transformation he, you went through in your life yes. uh, to get to the point where you are today. And in that program, you made reference to a lifestyle model? I mean, I'm not sure what, what, what mm -hmm. would you call it. Uh, yeah, I, I would say that it is a key uh, sort of uh, recipe, if you okay. like, for health and success in life. And uh, I'm eager to share it. So the first time uh, that I've been uh, able to share this is on your program. Well, that's great. Well, so wonderful. Really well, we're very excited. excited. We're, we're honored to do that. So yes. the ac it's transform. Ex yes. Right, and so um, we've dedicated two programs to this. Mm -hmm. I also want the folks to know that at the end of the program, we will offer them a PDF mm -hmm. of the transform model. So I, I don't want to take any more time because <laughs> folks don't want to listen to me; they want to hear uh, from you. So, you transform. Okay, transform is a word that uh, that the Lord gave to me to represent all of the different facets that I feel are what constitutes healthy living, healthy lifestyle, and ultimately uh, a successful quality life. And uh, could go even further and say, uh, transform your health, transform your life. Mm. And so uh, we might as well just dive right into it. Yeah, we, I talked last time about the fact that for a lay person like me, it can be confusing sometimes. So I'm really excited about, you know, you're hearing this because that's, I need a recipe in my life. I need the steps to follow. So what does the T in transform stand for? So T stands for trust in the Lord. Mm -hmm. And I draw that from Proverbs 3, verse 5 which goes something like this, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. And so when we think of something that uh, we want to, as far as a lifestyle model, uh, when we think about what would be the most important and my experience has been putting God first putting uh, trust in uh, what God can do for you and I in our lives. Mm -hmm. And another word we could use is faith. Okay. Yes. Is that uh, when we have the faith to believe that God has you and I and this world and this universe in his command and control, that uh, we can be assured that everything is going to be all right. And so when we look at trust in the Lord, we look at many things. Um, but what I would like to just uh, comment on sure. is when we have trust in the Lord and we uh, follow him and we, we, we 
that scripture I said, we, we, in all our ways, you know, there's some depth to that. Yes. That means that God's not asking for us just to sort of have a bit of a token experience with him. He wants us to share everything with him. Right. All our hopes, all our dreams, all our aspirations, all of our problems, everything that constitutes anything that has to do with our lives, he's interested from the, the, the most simple to the greatest things. And when we know that and have that confidence, that really goes a long way yes. in helping us develop a, a healthy um, a core. And what I'd like to do is I have a few things sure. that, uh, you know, people may wonder, well, if, if I accept God into my life, if I accept Jesus into my life, how's that going to benefit me? What, what is it? And there are some tangible things. And I, I wanted to um, refer to this study. Reader's Digest has reported that in a nationwide study of 21,000 people, mm -hmm. those who prayed and attended religious services more than once a week had a seven-year longer life expectancy for Caucasians. Wow. And for African Americans, up to 14 wow. more years. And that's just attending religious services. This is a study that's done by a secular organization. I, as a pastor of a church, I need to get a copy of that. <laughs> yes. That so, coming I to mean, church can help you live longer. Well, it's it's, a, it's incredible. And uh, another one here, as we internalize Christ's unconditional love for us, research shows unconditional love is the most powerful stimulant of the immune system. And this is a, uh, a reference from Dr. Bernie Siegel in his book, Love, Medicine, and Miracles. Hmm. Uh, maybe one more I'll sure. refer to. Reviews of more than 1,200 published studies in physical, mental, and social health fields revealed that the majority of studies indicate that religiousness is associated with less coronary artery disease, hypertension, stroke, immune system dysfunction, cancer, and functional impairment, fewer negative health behaviors such as smoking, drug and alcohol abuse, risky sexual behaviors, and sedentary lifestyle, and lower overall mortality. Mm. Yeah, we sometimes say that spiritually healthy people tend to be physically or spiritually healthier people tend to be physically healthier people. Yes. And so... And research uh, backs that seems up. Seems to be backing it yeah. up. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, uh, our viewers may be thinking, well, okay, so wh wh what do I do now? I mean, if I, if I want to uh, have trust in the Lord, wh what am I going to do? What, what are the steps that I would take? And I, I would suggest that there's four steps. Number one is um, Bible study. Take your Bible and start reading it. Start with, uh, say, a book, the book of John or, right. or the Psalms. And go even a little bit further and memorize a Bible promise, maybe just once a week. Right. Second thing is prayer. Adopt prayer into your life where you speak to God. You share with the Lord everything that's on your mind and on your heart. Right. And then third step is meditate. And I kind of call that God's opportunity to speak to us. Right. So we pray, we speak to him, we meditate, he speaks to us, right. he communicates with us. Be and still, I, the Bible says, right? Be still and know that I'm... Absolutely. I that, right? Be still. And then the fourth step, very important, is to share your faith hmm. and find someone or something that you can live out this faith that you have um, that might be just with your family, your spouse, your, your, your children, your friends. Um, if they're open and willing, we don't want to force ourselves. But uh, maybe it's a humanitarian cause. Maybe it's a uh, volunteering somewhere or do, doing something that would, would help our fellow man. Um, these are sort of things that um, might be uh, uh, a way of getting that going in, in entrenching that as a daily habit in your life? Well, I think it's an excellent starting point. And I think it's key that, well, one of the points you made that it's trusting God all the time. The tendency is that we tend to turn to God 
in the bad times and forget him in the good times. Exactly. And the Jews used to say, uh, the Old Testament used to say, the Jews would say, um, seek the physician even you know, before you're sick. Yes. You know, be with, so trusting in God, that relationship with him. Yes. In good and in bad. And in bad. All the time. Yes. Like the foundation for a healthy life. I've, uh, <clears throat> in the outline that uh, the viewers can receive, um, I have included in each of the letters an extra transformational tip. And one of those is what you brought up, is that why do we, why do we wait uh, when we're on our deathbed right. or our lives are threatened? We're going through a deep and dark time. Why not just accept him now and enjoy heaven on earth now and the assurance of eternal life with him forever? Excellent. Next letter. Starting point. R. R for rest. And a lot of times people, when we, we, we talk about rest, the people would think, oh, well, uh, I guess I need to get a good night's sleep. And that is important. I mean, sleep deprivation is a huge problem today mm -hmm. where people are just not getting enough sleep. But I, uh, I broaden it out. Okay. So we have daily rest, we have weekly rest, and we have monthly and we have annual rest. Now the viewers are gonna think, well, yeah. I, I gotta work sometime, don't I? I've gotta make a living. But you know, it is, if we're intentional about it, we can do this. So on a daily basis, when you're sitting at your desk or you're involved with something, take a break, get up, move around, change the scenery. Um, think about things that you are happy about or that move you, that you're passionate about. Um, okay. When it comes to uh, uh, sort of a break time, uh, do something that you enjoy. You know, maybe it's a hobby, maybe it's a sport, maybe it's uh, being with your uh, dog or your cat or another pet, or it, it might be playing an instrument. These things um, get to the core of, of what you've brought up in other programs is that stress. Mm. Uh, stress is the number one cause of all our illnesses. It's a killer. Stress. Yeah. And if we can take these little moments during the day to de-stress. Uh, I love playing music. I play an instrument. That just washes the stress out of my system. I think you made a, very, I made a number of very important points, but this one that you have to actually program it in. You do. The tendency is we say, I understand that I need to take, and as soon as I get a chance, I'm going to take that break. That chance never comes. Yeah. You actually have to program it into your, would you suggest that actually slotting it into your day? Yes. It, you, as I mentioned, you need to be intentional about right. this. And once you do that, and what is it, 21 days to make a habit? Yes. And uh, a, a recent study showed that 66 days creates automaticity, meaning it's automatic. Hmm. And in 66 days, roughly, that's when that becomes automatic and you don't even have to think about it anymore. Very interesting. So when it comes to rest and the release of stress, the daily is important, yes. but God has given us 52 extra days of rest every week, like one day a week. That's right. And uh, we know from the Ten Commandments that God has said that... Uh, Remember the Sabbath day. On that day you shall do no work. He's given us then 52 That's right. extra yeah, days, absolutely. holidays. Absolutely right. And, and he's added a blessing on that day. And yeah. he has sanctified that day. That's right. So uh, it, it is really great uh, since I have adopted that habit of keeping the Sabbath day that uh, I have forced, forced, I love that day because I can get away from what I'm doing and I can commune with God, Absolutely. I can be with my family and my friends, uh, enjoy nature, get outside, get some fresh air and sunlight. Just fantastic. You know, there's a study done uh, with entrepreneurs. In fact, there's a program here in Toronto called Strategic Coach. And one of the key concepts that they teach that leads to successful business practice for entrepreneurs is in every seven days, one day has to be a free day. Isn't that interesting? Where you 
completely step away from what you do those other six days. Yes. And that you are more productive dedicating six and stepping away for one than you would in dedicating doing all seven. All seven. And Absolutely. you and I know that they got that they got from that God. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. Uh, further studies have shown that there's a, a circuseptin cycle that is biologically implanted in us by the Creator. Hmm. Is that not amazing? That is we amazing. are, and that just backs up exactly what you brought up, is that we have this seven-day cycle. And it's natural, it's biologically uh, part of us. We just need to implement it. It's wonderful. Now you talked about monthly rest. Uh, yeah, so monthly, we can, we can combine monthly and annual. So the monthly rest is maybe a weekend getaway every so often. Just, you, you've got to take that time and get away and, 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 and change the scenery. Get, uh, get to a place where you just can really get away. Right. And that gets into more what we might say the annual view of getting away. Uh, I have so many patients and I'll ask them, you know, you're really stressed out. When did you take your last vacation? Oh, uh, we don't take vacations. I don't think I've had one in 10 or 15 years. And uh, part of my recommendations, take that vacation. Take that week or two weeks, better two weeks, to totally unwind, Yes. totally unplug, get away from the technology, get away from everything, and regenerate and rejuvenate. Wow, this is going great so far. I love this. You're absolutely right. So the next letter, which is A, A. stands for activity. And we like to use the word activity because exercise has, a bit, has a bit of a, of a negative a derogatory right, right. <laughs> side to it. Here we go, exercise. So yeah, so we like to use the word activity because we encourage people to just take the time to do something that they enjoy doing. And it doesn't matter what it is, whether it's gardening, whether it's doing some housework even, uh, but the simplest thing is start a walking program. And I have, uh, if I can bring this up, I have a list of benefits that you can experience just by walking. And I mean, it's something that anyone can do. You need a pair of running shoes or comfortable walking shoes. It's social. Uh, you can get a partner and walk with that person. The other day, my cousin Manny, uh, showed, he had a Fitbit, is that what it's called? Fitbit, right? yes. And he's trying to walk 10,000 steps a day. Yeah, exactly. On my list here, it works the largest muscles of the body. It uh, promotes cardiorespiratory endurance. It firms, strengthens, and tones the muscles, tendons, and ligaments. Uh, it promotes oxygenation of the heart, brain, blood, and muscles. It promotes calcium assimilation and utilization for bone development and stability is low impact. So. so let me interrupt you right yeah. there, if I may. So what's your view on walking versus, let's say, jogging? Well, again, we're looking for something that anyone, almost anyone okay. can do. And that will take out a certain percentage of the population. The physical benefit, is it relatively the same walking and jogging? Good question. Um, I would say that the benefits of walking would, in the big picture, would almost outweigh jogging, just simply because of the wear and tear that jogging has on the body. Interesting. So, in terms of looking at the longevity of, right. uh, of an exercise plan, if you can walk at a moderate pace, so we call that conversational cardio, where you can carry on a conversation while you're walking, that's good, and if you want to step it up for a little bit and then step back okay. and so on, right. it's great. And very, very little chance that you can cause yourself any harm. And really that's what you want. You want a long term. This is a, yes. this is a lifestyle change. A this is not a lifelong yeah. okay. commitment. Interesting. Right? So anybody can engage in that. And people ask, well, how much, how long? Right. I say 30 minutes three times a week, 
aim for that. Start out slow, try and walk maybe a little bit further, maybe a little bit faster each day or each few days, you know, and gradually build up and, and you'll, be, you'll be moving along with the best of them. I heard someone say that, that sitting is the new smoking. It is. Sitting is the new smoking because we were not meant, we were not created to be immobile. We were created to move around. That's how our body actually mm. metabolizes. Right, okay. And so if we're sitting for too long a period of time, then we start to create problems in the body where we're, uh, you know, the way I'm sitting right now, not a good thing because I'm cutting off blood circulation, cutting off blood flow. I should be actually sitting like this and being a good example. <laughs> <laughs> These chairs are not the most comfortable. <laughs> so that's, that's, the, that's the thing we're trying to get away from. The other thing about activity is, is that you want to think about these three things. Number one, you want to think about the cardio benefits. Okay. Number two, you want to think about anaerobic or strength training. So you want to incorporate something that would use the muscles of your upper body. You're walking, you're, lose, you're using those large muscles, but the upper body, very, very important. And research is showing that, for example, that if women do just 20 minutes, three times a week of strength training, that will add years to their life, something like 14 years. It's incredible. The research is... Uh, quite fascinating hmm. on those things. And then the third area is flexibility. So we should be working into our daily routine, uh, stretching, okay. toning, so that we can maintain uh, the limber, uh, lithe type of uh, movement that, that we need that, that helps us to you know, get upstairs, move here, get in and out of the car and so on. These are all very important, those three areas. So. 30 minutes, three times a week for walking. Mm -hmm. Th those numbers seem to have come way down over the last number. They have. Way over the they last have. number of years, right? It's interesting yeah. that the studies are showing that. Yeah, and now that's a minimum. It doesn't mean you can't do more, but we're trying to look at a very busy society, right? and we're trying to say, okay, if you can carve out this much time, it is going to make it's going a to have a noticeable difference. It will. A noticeable yeah. difference. You're Definitely. Wow. Definitely. And the other thing that I wanted to share with our viewers is, is that the idea of, you know, being really fit and so on conjures up ideas of being in that gym for hours, pumping weights and pounding yes. on the um, elliptical machine or on the treadmill. And you know, research is showing that that's not the case. That if we ad adopt a moderately intense exercise uh, type of mentality, that we're going to we're going to do well. We're going Excellent. To do well. well, that's 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 good, because I think that has that has scared some folks away in the past. Oh, saying, definitely. I can't commit that kind of time or that. Yeah. But I mean, in all honesty, any one of us can find yeah. 30 minutes three times a week to, a to get out and walk. Exactly. We got about three minutes left, and we wanted to move to. N. N. Okay. And N stands for nutrition, okay. of course. And uh, this is an area which um, <clears throat> you could get all the nutritional experts and armchair nutritionists, and you'd ask them what is the best diet, and you'd get a different answer from, from every, every one of them. As a layperson, that's what we sometimes <laughs> feel. And sometimes it almost sounds contradictory. It does. Uh, what I want to refer to, though, is what counsel that God has given us in the Bible. Uh, the Bible says in Genesis chapter 1, 29, see, I have given you every herb that yields seed, which is on the face of the earth, and every tree whose fruit yields seed to you, it shall be for food. And so here God has given us the recipe for what it is we should eat. A plant-based diet is now being I suppose, in over many years now, proven to be the most excellent for our health. And God had it in the Bible all along. All along, that's right. So that's what I recommend. That's what I do most, a mostly vegan diet. Not completely, but the closer you can, the better. Um, I, I feel that we are uh, 
needing to move back towards that because we have gotten away from that. And if we can, that will make a huge difference. Uh, I love to pick your brain. And we, we traveled uh, together in Paraguay on a mission trip not too long ago. We got a chance to talk quite a bit. And I hope you don't mind all my questions. But yeah. in your assessment, is it worth the investment of going with the organic fruits and vegetables versus non-organic? I mean, there's a, there's a cost difference. Is it? Yes. Is, is, is the benefit there that would justify that addition? What's your assessment on that, your opinion? Well, it is a, uh, you know, good, better, best. So it's good to get good food. It's better to get food that has been grown in our locale, fresh, and it's best if we can get it organically grown. Okay. So that's the kind of way that I would approach that and just do the best that you can. But focusing and moving towards that more plant-based diet is going to do wonderful things. Road of time. <laughs> thank you. We're going to have you back to finish Transform. We're going to have a word Beautiful. of prayer. Gracious God, thank you for this instruction. And I pray that your Holy Spirit will give us the courage, the strength, and the motivation to make these kinds of practical changes in our life that all can experience a healthier life. Be with each and every viewer, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we've come to the end of another program. Thank you so much for joining us. Dr. Sloan, thank you for being here. Just a quick review. We covered T. Trust in the Lord. R. For rest. A. Activity. N. For nutrition. Excellent. Next week, we'll finish the word transform. Sounds great. Look forward to having you with us. Thank you. And I hope you'll join us also. Remember to visit the website, l4ltv.com. This program will be on the website. You can share it with your friends. It'll be on our Facebook page. Like us on Facebook. And if you want to get a hold of Dr. Sloan, the information on how to contact him is also on our website. Feel free to contact him. He can help you on the path to a, a healthier life. Thank you so much for joining us. We pray that we'll get this chance to do this real soon. Until then, God bless you. See you again.